You are terrible at modding your Sims 4 game. Yep, I'm gonna keep it real with you. You are awful at it. You need some assistance. Luckily, I, Salita Sims, am here to help you. This is the ultimate Sims 4 modding tutorial, the only modding tutorial you will ever need. If you were to ask any Sims 4 player what they enjoy most about The Sims 4, it would probably be that The Sims 4 is a very easy game to mod, not to mention the plethora of mods available. Pretty much anything you could think of, there is a mod that exists for it. There is a mod to bring back spiral staircases. There is a mod to incorporate the fairies occult from The Sims 3 that we all know and love. And there is a mod to get very spicy in HG with other Sims. Playing The Sims 4 without mods is not an option for me because mods bring so much realism into the game. However, not everybody knows how to mod properly. And I'm often asked, how do I keep track of all the mods that I have in my game? How do I keep them updated? And how do I keep my game from breaking? I've been playing The Sims 4 for the past three years, very consistently, heavily modded. And I've not had a single save file of mine corrupt or any of my games break. And that's because I know how to properly mod. And today I'm gonna tell you about what my process is when it comes to modding The Sims 4 and some tips and tricks you can incorporate. So you have a smooth Sims 4 modded gaming experience. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So for those of you who are new here and new to the world of The Sims 4, maybe you're wondering, what even are mods? Well, by definition, video game modding is a process of alteration by players or fans of one or more aspects of the video game, such as how it looks or behaves, and is a sub-discipline of general modding. Mods may range from small changes and tweaks to complete overhauls, and it can extend the replay value and interest of the game. In plain English, it basically means that mods add more to your your game. And since The Sims 4 is a life simulation game, these mods can really help make your games become more realistic. And I don't know about you, but I love realism in my game. So let's figure out how to find these mods to begin with. Mods are available from a few different websites. So like I said earlier, there is Sims 4 mods for almost anything you could think of. All you really have to do is go onto Google or your search engine and search up Sims 4 whatever you want mod. So let's say Sims 4 cooking mod and you will have some different mods pop up, such as Little Bo Bub's Granny's Cookbook Mod, or Stomach and Severinka's Cookbook Mod, etc. I also have a whole video dedicated to Sims 4 cooking mods, so if you'd like to watch that video, you can click up above. Besides searching on Google, there are some other places you could go to to discover more mods. TikTok is a really great place to start. All you have to do is search Sims 4 mods in the search bar, and you will be shown a plethora of different mod showcase videos. I actually happen to have a mods list on my Tumblr, which is solitasims4.tumblr.com, and I showcase mods here on YouTube as well as on my TikTok Solita Sims. And if you'd like an update on my mods list, I know a lot of you guys have been asking for me to update it and uh, stick around to the end of this video. Other great places to find mods would be Tumblr, Patreon, Pinterest, or getting to know other members of the Sims 4 community such as joining Discord servers or Twitter communities. All right, you found the mod of your dreams and you are just so excited to install it and play it in your game. Well, there's something we need to do first before we install mods. Okay, you need to make sure you are downloading this mod from a reputable source And what I mean by that is you do not want to go on YouTube and someone has posted a Sims folder with a bunch of CC and mods in it and download from there That is a one great way to break your game because those mods and CC can be extremely outdated or even worse They could have malware in it. Yes, believe it or not This issue actually happens a lot where there are losers on the internet who purposely Purposely will put malware into their mods or other people's mods just to break your game just to, just for fun just because. And that is terrible to lose your computer or your Sims 4 save file because you were not being diligent. The only place you want to download mods from would be the mod author's official pages. Mod authors typically post their mods on Patreon, Sims File Share, Sims Finds, or the Sims Resource. Those are probably the four safest websites you can go to to download Sims 4 mods. And I would avoid any website you go to where they have Adfly or Linkverse attached to their mod downloads. The the reason why some creators attach Adfly or Linkverse to their downloads is because they're trying to make money off of those ads. But again, those websites can be very risky to use. A great mod to install on in your game to make sure that there isn't any malware that you downloaded would be Twisted Mexi's Mod Guard mod. While it's in your game, it will detect if there's anything suspicious going on in any of the files you've downloaded and it will tell you. See, this is what I mean. <laughs> 
I just tried to download a dress and this is what pops up. It's my antivirus software, McAfee. Stick to the big four, which would be Patreon, Sims File Share, Sims Finds, and The Sims Resource. Now about Patreon and The Sims Resource, some creators like to release their mods for early access before releasing it to the public, which basically means if you pay for their subscription, you will get a few weeks early access to that mod. So you're gonna be able to download it before the public can. Since mod authors use EA's code in order to create their mods, it is in EA's rules that you must release these mods for public within a reasonable time frame. Most mod authors agreeing that's about two weeks to a month. So if you want to avoid that and you don't wanna pay any money or you just can't afford to do that, you would have to wait until it's publicly released. The Sims resource is a bit different because they are a paid subscription service. So you pay a few dollars a month and you have full and complete access to everything on their website. The Sims resource gets a lot of criticism, but personally, I do love it. And if you are new to the world of modding in The Sims 4, I think they're gonna be your best bet. If you can afford it, that is. So yes, always, always, always make sure you're downloading your mod from a reputable source, which would be the mod author's original page. You found the mod, you found the mod author's original Patreon, Sims file share, whatever it is. Next up, before you download that mod, I'm gonna need you to read the mod description. So many times I've seen on Twitter or people asking me on TikTok that they couldn't download this mod or this mod isn't working for them because they didn't read the description. Some of these mods that you guys are downloading are going to require certain Sims 4 packs and you might not have those Sims 4 packs, meaning that the mod isn't going to work properly. Sometimes the mod is outdated and you need to update it after a big update that the Sims 4 has had or because the mod author has added new updates to their mod. Sometimes you need another mod in order for said mod to work. For example, there is a very well-known mod author named Adip Indigo. They make some of the greatest Sims 4 mods in existence. A lot of their mods require another one of their mods called Pi Menus. So if you download Adip Indigo's, let's say their healthcare redux mod, but you don't download their Pi Menu mod when they clearly said in the description that you need the Pi Menu mod in order for health redux to work, then health redux isn't gonna work. Or Lot 51. Lot 51 is another one of my favorite mod authors. Many of their mods require their core library mod. So if you don't have the core library mod with their, let's say their doorbell mod, then the doorbell mod is not going to work. And that's why it is so important to read the descriptions through and through. I know sometimes mod authors go on and on in their descriptions, but it's important to look at. And they're leaving that description there for you for a reason. They don't want your game to break. It's also important to read these descriptions because it might mention mod conflicts. See, not every mod that you install is going to work with another mod you installed in your game. You might download Wicked Whims and realize that it conflicts with spinning plum bobs as fairies versus witches mod. That is not true, by the way. I'm just using that as an example. Mod authors will tell you in the description if their mod has certain conflicts with other mods. The description is also very important to read because you could read the change log. A change log is basically everything the creator changed or updated about the mod after its latest update. For this mod, it was updated last on June 20th, 2024, and these are all the new things that were added to the mod. You can see what's new, what bugs were fixed, if any translations were added, etc. Read the description through and through all of it, including the terms of use. The terms of use is very important. Terms of use basically means what you are allowed and you're not allowed to do with the mod author's mod. Some mod authors won't allow you to re-upload it to other websites. Some mod authors won't allow you to make recolors for anything in their mod or their CC. And some might not want you to convert their mod or their CC to other games. It's a matter of respect. And I feel like if this person went out of their way to make this mod that you love and you appreciate, then you should do them the favor of at least acknowledging their terms of use. And like I said earlier, yes, some mods do require certain packs. And if you do not have those packs installed in your game, the mod is not gonna work properly. If you are looking into buying some new packs, however, I am an EA affiliate, which basically means that whenever you use my code Solita Sims at checkout on the Sims 4 website or on the EA app, I will get a small commission from that sale. So if you'd like to support me as a creator and keep this channel going, then this would be a great way to do so. Again, that is Solita Sims on the Sims 4 official website or on the EA app when purchasing any Sims 4 DLC. Thank you guys so much for your support and love always. And here is exactly how you would go about downloading a mod. I have found a reputable source. This is the mod author's official Patreon page, the Pancake One and Mizuor Yuki. I have read the description. I've checked out the change logs, any updates, and I have made sure that this is the only file that I need from them. And it is. Go ahead and click it and then it will start downloading and you have your mod. So now let's go put that into our game. So you've downloaded your mod, finally. Okay, you're going into the downloads folder of your computer and now you're wondering how the hell do you put this in your game? So the first 
first thing you want to do, you want to see what type of file you downloaded. Sometimes you're just going to get a package file. Sometimes you're just going to get a TS4 script file. Sometimes you are going to get a .rar or a .zip file. If you don't know what a .rar or a .zip file is, it is a compressed version of the files you just downloaded. Do not install the .rar or .zip file straight into your game like that. No, the mod will not appear in your game. What you need to do is you need to unzip the file. So in order to do this, if it's a .rar file, you could use a program like WinRAR. WinRAR is completely free to use. They say it's not, but it really is. <laughs> I've had it on my computer since after the free trial and I can still use it every day. So love you WinRAR for that. Um, so you'd install WinRAR onto your computer. Make sure you install it again from their official website. Okay. As always anything you download online, download it from a reputable source. Okay. WinRAR's official website, download WinRAR. And then once you've done that, you'd basically just go to that RAR file, right click it, and you would open it with WinRAR. You could then drag those files from WinRAR into The Sims 4, and I'll show you exactly what folder to put all those files in as well. So if you're on Mac and you're downloading zip files, I use the Unarchiver. It's free and it works very well for me. If you are enjoying this video and you've learned anything new, make sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe for me. It really helps me out. Thank you so much. Once you finally open those files, it's time to now install them into The Sims 4. We're getting there. We're almost there. We're almost at the point of when we can open our game and play with these mods. You are going to want to go down to your documents folder. And once you open your documents folder, you are going to see a folder that says electronic arts. You're going to double click that. Once you double click the electronic arts folder, you're going to see the Sims 4 folder. I have the Sims 3 as well. You're going to want to open the Sims 4 folder. And right here, it's going to say mods. Or if you do not have a mods folder, all you have to do is make one. You just right click and add new folder and would type in mods. Once your mods folder is installed or after you found it, you want to go ahead and open it. And this is where you're going to put all your new mods. Here is my mods folder. Everyone wants to see my mods folder and see how I have things organized because I have so many mods. Look at that down there. 544 items. Yeah, I'm not too proud of it, but what can I say? It's an addiction that doesn't hurt anybody. So the way I like to organize my mods, this is me. You don't have to do this is I have my CC in brackets up here. So that would be like my accessories, my hair, my makeup, my poses, my animation, some of the CC and animations and poses that I make. I don't differentiate these by creator or anything. I just let them be where they are. Now for my mods though, it is a completely different story. I like to have the creators organize in alphabetical order. So we have, you know, a bit of Wang, a deep indigo, Alfsi, a melt, we have them all in alphabetical order. And then what I like to do after I've added their name, I add a little dash next to their name and then I add the name of the mod. Sometimes like on these two mods, I will have the versions of the mod as well. Usually only if I update this mod a lot, like it requires a lot of updates or if it's one of my essential mods, like a mod I cannot live without and I need to know the specifics of it. And then lastly, I will put the date of when I last updated the mod. So we have May 2024, February 2024. That doesn't mean I'm necessarily neglecting them. It just means that they haven't had an update since then. They haven't needed one. Or maybe I have been neglecting them. I don't know. I haven't looked at a deep into ghost page in a while. I tend to update my mods every month. That's when I usually check on if there's any new updates or if the Sims game gets a big update and all my mods are broken. So I have no choice but to update them. But yeah, this is how I like to do it. And I've been doing it like this for two years and it's worked out very well for me. So I'd recommend you do something similar. Make sure you know you have the name. It's in a certain order that you can remember and that you have the date you last updated it. It will really help you keep your mods in check. And speaking of updates, these mods are going to need updates regularly, okay? Usually like 90% of these mods will break eventually. And that's because of a few different factors. One, EA has updated The Sims game. Two, you've just bought and installed a new pack. Three, the creator decided to implement more to their mod or they have a bug in their mod that someone discovered and they fixed it. Very important to check on your mods at least once a month, I would say. You can do this by going onto the creator's page or if you have certain mods installed like Twisted Mexi's Better Exceptions mod or Deaderpool's MC Command Center, they will actually tell you when you have something wrong going on in your game. Everybody who's a Sims 4 player that plays with mods has seen this orange last exception notification pop up in the corner while they're playing the game. That means that something in your game is broken or it needs some tuning done to it. It just needs an update. And a really cool thing about both MC Command Center and Better Exceptions is that if you do have something wrong with your game, they will generate a document stating what exactly 
is wrong with your game. So if I open up this last exception report from MC Command Center, it's gonna tell you everything that I managed to um, not update and then I need to update immediately. But if you're not good with this type of stuff, you can go to their Discord server and actually ask for help from people that actually do know what they're talking about. Those are two great mods to always have installed in your game. They've helped me out so many times. And important, this is very important. I need to talk about this because it annoys me every single time a Sims 4 update rolls around and the mods are broken. Do not, under any circumstances, go to the mod authors page and start harassing them about when are they gonna get their mod updated, okay? Mod authors are humans. They have responsibilities and obligations just like the rest of us. They have families, they have lives, they have careers. So whenever an update rolls around from The Sims 4, it might take a mod author some time to update their mods and you are going to allow them that time. You're going to give them that time and you're not going to complain about it. If you're worried about your mods and your save files, just do not update your game. Go into the EA app and turn automatic updates off. This means that the EA app will not automatically update The Sims 4 when you turn your computer on on the day of an update. Instead, you would have to click and confirm that you want the game to be updated. Whenever this happens and my mods are broken, I don't do this for at least a good one to two weeks or until at least majority of my mods are updated. What I do instead is I go to the top left corner and I press go offline. Yes, you could play The Sims 4 completely offline. That way you could still play the game and you don't have to worry about your save files breaking. But just a heads up, if you decide to go offline and play The Sims 4, you will not be able to use the gallery. You can still check out your own gallery, like everything you've saved, but you cannot search on the gallery. You can either do this, you can either uninstall those broken mods until they're updated and you're ready to reinstall them, or you could simply not play The Sims 4. But one thing you can't do and you should not do is go and harass mod authors. I promise you they know their mods are broken and I promise you they will update them as soon as they can. Most mod authors take like one to three weeks to update their mods. So patience. Do not be rude to them because they have the capabilities of taking that mod away from us forever. So here's how you'd go about updating a mod. I'm here on Deadpool's official website to download MCC because it needs an update. Here is the latest version of the mod and this is the description. It basically says it fixes what was needed for the July 23rd update, which was the Sims update for the Love Struck expansion pack. I would go here, click it, and in the top right corner, it's going to start downloading. As you can see right here, it was downloaded as a RAR file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it. I'm going to go down here to where it says been RAR and I'm going to extract it to MC command center all modules. It's basically going to put it into its own little folder and there it is right down below and here are all the files you need to update your mod. I'm going to go ahead and open my mods folder in a separate tab. Here's my mod folder once again. I'm going to scroll down to where Deadpool's mod is. It's listed under Deadpool MCC. I'm going to open the folder and it's going to have all of my old files in here. I'm going to select all the new files and just drag it in. It's going to say if you want to replace it or skip, I'm just going to replace them. And like that, my mod has been updated. Now it depends on the creator, but some creators will tell you again in the description, which is why it's so important to read the descriptions, that instead of replacing their files for their mods, you just want to outright delete them first before updating their mod. Deadpool doesn't say anything like that on their website, and I've always done it like this and never had any issues, so I just replaced the files. But again, read the descriptions, because you never know. And just like that, your mod's been updated. Another great tip is to always back up your save files. This is great to do before you update your game. This is a great thing to do before you install new mods. I'm paranoid, so I back up my saves before I load onto The Sims 4 every single time. Is there really any need for me to do that? No, I've never had my game break, like I said earlier. But I've heard of many people who have, and I would start bawling if I lost years worth of progress and all the Sims that I love and care for. So you're wondering, how on earth do I back up my saves? What does that even mean? It basically just means creating a copy of your save files. So you'd want to go to Electronic Arts, click on The Sims 4 again, and then right here you're going to have your saves folder. It has all the information about all the save files you have in your game. You basically want to right click your saves folder and press copy. And you can then go ahead and paste this folder into an external source like a USB hard drive, or you could just save it to your desktop. Here's a copy I have that's right here on my desktop. So if something gets corrupted while I'm updating or adding a new mod or whatever, I can just go 
ahead and reinstall this copy and all my save files will be all right. And you're done. You did it. You've installed your mods. Now there's only one more thing you need to do before you're actually ready to play with them. You're going to want to open The Sims 4. Once you've opened The Sims 4, you're going to want to go down to options and then game options. You're going to want to go down to other and then you are going to want to enable this. Enable custom content and mods. Mine is already enabled, obviously. And right underneath it, you're going to want to enable script mods as well. And then it's going to give you a pop-up saying you have to restart your game in order for the mods and CC to work. So you're going to do exactly that. You're going to select it, apply the changes, exit the game and restart the game. Now, when you restart the game, your game might take a little bit longer this time to reload. And that's because you have a bunch of new files installed in your game. And now you are officially ready to play your modded Sims 4 game. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I was able to teach you something and you were able to learn something new. And I wish you the best of luck on your modding journey. And with the end of this video, I have an announcement. I have been taking way too long to update my mods list. I have a Sims 4 mods list on my Tumblr, so latestsims4.tumblr.com. It's been around for a few years, but I haven't updated it in a very long time. I have uninstalled so many mods since then, and I was like, I need to do something about this. So I have a brand new mod list available for you guys to see. It is not on Tumblr, however, because it is way too long for Tumblr to handle. It is on Google Docs, and you could view this form by going to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Sims, and clicking on my most recent post. This mods list will be up forever, and I will try this time to uh, keep it updated at least once a month with any new mods I've installed or any mods I've uninstalled. Hope you guys discover some fun new mods with my list. Make sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed and you want to see more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!